Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. A new video and a first one for this year, a power overlay effort breakdown video of this, well, I wouldn't call it a relatively unknown climb in Tenerife, but it's one that um, I don't think it's maybe as popular as going up the big volcano, which you can see in the distance there in front of me. I'm actually taking on this this climb, which is around about nine to ten kilometers long. Really good, steady gradient. It was big ring the whole way. Um, there were some moments where I felt like I could have gone into the small ring, but I had this all on the GoPro, and I felt like let's let's just make it into a like power overlay video with some talking about the Tenerife training camp. Because if you've seen the videos from the training camp like the vlogs you'll have seen like some snippets of obviously you know us out riding and getting some effort in and, and riding on the roads around here but like maybe not so much of me talking about like you know bits and bobs that have happened you know around the day the start of the day how we've planned the rides and things so I did ask um, I put a little bit of a, a last minute like pull out to see if anybody wanted anything specific there was a lot of talk about like you know how did you find the routes how did you um, plan your nutrition from day to day so I'll be in I'll be a bit more detailed in this video um, and, and hopefully cover a few more things that you wouldn't have seen um, in the in the vlogs uh, so it'll be a bit like a, a podcast chat of just me basically telling you what's happening but with some nice scenery to boot so I mean first of all let's just cover this effort because this was day three of a four-day trip in Tenerife we kind of um, we kind of just went out on a whim each day like deciding what we would do we would change our routes based on how we were feeling and decide yeah the night before or on the day um, this wasn't on the cards. Uh, I actually we we found this climb when we were just out on our first ride of the trip, and we came down off Mount Tini, off the big volcano. We came down the big uh, the straighter descent off the west side of the island. I want to say. So we came down into Chico, I think it's called, and then you you basically can come down this road straight into uh, Playa San Juan. And there's a really nice cafe there, um, right on the seafront, which is where we had pizza for lunch every single day. I'm sure lots of you can get behind that. Um, now, actually, we came down this, and and like within like two kilometers of coming down here, we were like, we've got to come back up this. Um, in my mind, though, I was like, I've got to come up this and absolutely send it. Um, <laughs> so I remember thinking, you know, there's a, there's a massive difference between riding a climb, like just zone two, zone three, and then like sending it up a climb. And this goes for everybody. You know, it's not just, you know, I know I'm able to do 25 kilometers an hour up this 5% gradient, uh, and generally anywhere between sort of 23 and, and 28 kilometers an hour on a 5% gradient is what we would call like pro climbing speed. Like you're, you're going pretty quick. Um, and it's all about using momentum, you know, it's using certain parts of the climb to, to keep that speed high. So like you'll see certain parts of this where I'm going up to 30k an hour, my power comes down slightly, and then when it when the when the gradient gets steeper, my power goes up. It's things I talk about all the time. Um, so w when you're riding up it, just riding up it, you don't really get a feel for the climb. Like you can see more, but you don't really get a feel for like the speed. And that's why I like doing these POVs of, of efforts because it gives you, uh, well, hopefully, maybe gives you a different perspective of climbing. Um, <clears throat> and also it helps me in my preparation as well for certain certain things that are coming up this year. Um, but yeah, the, the trip to Tenerife was four days. We had four big rides. We average about five to six hours every day. Um, probably around about, um, I want to say like on average 250 to 300 TSS. That goes for me and the boys, like the, the difference between you know myself and them is that I have to throw in like a few more efforts to really get a, a training stimulus out of it. Whereas 
they can generally just ride the route that we're doing and and like do the climbs at their pace and they're like racking up more training than they would in general i remember them talking about how you know they they maybe only ride on zwift um twice three times a week and get one ride outdoors so yeah it's like this for them was a massive sort of increase in riding training time um it was obviously a holiday and this is the thing like these trips can be like made into a good mix of holidays and well like a mini training camp i mean i treated it as a training camp uh, but from many people's perspective, you know, just going out here and riding and experiencing the weather and the climbs, you know, the the cafes, the the restaurants, you know, everything's reasonably priced. It's not like, you know, dare I say the UK, everything is like, <laughs> uh, things are going up in price. But like being here was like super chill, relaxed and a great experience. And I know when I was sharing these rides on Strava, um, you know, not even from an effort perspective, people looking at what I was doing and training, but just from a, like a brick, a getaway perspective, like lots of you were saying, really jealous, you know, it's raining in Wales again. And like, <laughs> you know, it's like being away here and just wearing shorts and jersey and having my jersey unzipped, you know, it's so good for your like mental well-being. And, and, and you know, I, I know a couple of guys who went to Mallorca, the exact same few days that we were here in Tenerife. And we definitely had the better end of that, like, that deal. Like, them being in Mallorca, it's kind of hit and miss still in February. Like, even in March, to a certain extent, like, you can get a little bit of snow. You can get, like, a bit of rain. And people do say if it rains in Mallorca, then it can be a little bit dodgy. You know, the roads get a little bit slippery. Whereas here, it's very much, like, pretty consistent um, weather-wise. Uh, it's not too hot it's like 20 degrees and when the wind's behind you of course then you know, it does feel a little bit hotter but like it's nothing ridiculous um so each day i would say we'd get up i mean the day before the night before we plan what we do so i actually went ahead and planned a lot of these routes for the guys and i said here's the options um you know i've been here a couple of times already so you know, i'm not completely familiar with it but i know you know which climbs we must do you know masca for example that video is coming soon as well you know which like where should we go like the cafes and things like that and i wanted to keep it a little bit laid back for them as well as you know giving them a little bit of a challenge and being able to see you know a lot of the the best places uh, to ride as well so the, the night before we decide we we really make a plan as to like you know are we going to are we going to do this route we're going to do this route and depending on fatigue, you know, particularly the, the second and third day, we were like, you know, we can have a little bit of a rest day. A rest day still ended up climbing like a thousand meters. <laughs> and that is the only downside to this place. Like, you can't really do a recovery ride. You can do, you know, easier rides, but they're not, <laughs> they're not necessarily recovery rides. If you want a recovery ride, you may as well stay and lie next to the pool all day. Although I know that's not a ride. That's just chilling in the pool. But you know what I mean. Um, so... We kind of woke up in the morning. We uh, we had a great accommodation actually that was um, probably about three k outside Los Cristianos. It was, it was only three or four k from the bottom of you know the big thirty five climb uh, through Villa Floor up to uh, the top of TD. Um, so it was a perfect place. It was actually a six bed, uh, three twin bedrooms. Um, you know, kitchen, like fully functioning kitchen, uh, washing machine, you know, swimming pools, a big, big area like where we could effectively just, you know, um, like chill out. Um, the TV was pretty poor. We actually missed Kern, Brussels Kern and uh, an omelette because of that, unfortunately. Uh, but we were riding our bikes anyway, so who cares? Um, <laughs> but we, <coughs> we, we, we know that like places like this people are always a little bit unsure like you know with with taxis and and things getting from the airport you can virtually walk outside into the taxi rank when you get there and there'll be like loads of different sizes of, of taxis and everything um so you'll have no problem finding one for a bike box um but i but three there was five of us on this trip three of us hired bikes 
Um, so two hired from one place and one guy hired from another place. Uh, bikes were fairly decent. Uh, one of them was riding a rim brake mechanical SRAM, which wasn't like I wouldn't have really recommended that one um, with 25 mil tires. And then the other two guys were riding, uh, riding relatively new Giant um, with discs, um, also mechanical, uh, with like 32 mil tires on, which was a bit weird. Um, <clears throat> but but like yeah, I mean it did it, it did them well for those for for the few days. Um, so you can easily hire bikes. And that's, you know, they deliver them to your accommodation. Um, but we got there. Uh, that was easy, straightforward. I think it was like 40 euros to get um, like 20 minutes for three of us in a taxi with a bike. And then um, the first day we, well, I mean, we just went out for a bike ride. I mean, we went up the big side of, uh, of TD first day. Um, and then came down the big descent, um, the, the straighter side. It was quite windy. You know, I think um, I had a, one question on one video where someone was asking, like, what sort of clothing do you wear when you go to places like this? Well, obviously, when you're sea level uh, and this climb, you know, you can see the elevation on the bottom left. You don't really go any higher here than than like six, seven hundred meters. Um, but when you go to the very top, you're like two thousand two hundred meters. Um, and we were kind of lucky in a way, like you, you might have been able to get away with, with nothing when you descend in, like just riding in the same kit you're, you're in. But um, if you're coming down from the top, I would probably suggest you would either wear like a arm warmers in a gilet, or at the very least like a rain cape. I mean, rain cape would probably do, do the job of an arm, on, arm warmers in a gilet anyway. Um, so it saves you carrying two pieces of clothing. But the other, the other thing you could do is you could actually um, you could carry a like mesh base layer up in a small like plastic bag, um, and then when you get to the top, you could check that base layer on, and it will be dry because it's in a bag, because um, you're no doubt gonna sweat going up. And then you can uh, chuck that base layer on at the top, and then descend down, and that that garment against your skin will will be dry. Um, so that's another that's another way you could do it. Um, but essentially it is 45 minutes usually going downhill if you're not very confident going downhill it could be you know closer to an hour and that's a long time to not be pedaling um, one day we actually did like a five and a half hour ride and we got to the top of the volcano and we sort of fooled appropriately um, accordingly but when we got to the top we were like ah you know it's only 45 minutes back to the accommodation we just you know we just freewheel back down and we were freewheeling back down and I actually I actually like had the hunger knock I ran out of juice maybe halfway down and it was, I put it down to like my heart rate dropping to like you know resting heart rate you know by the time we've been descending for like 20-25 minutes it's like you've just been sat in a cafe it's really weird like going downhill for that length of time but like when you get down you're like you start to sort of go a little bit lightheaded because you you've not eaten you're really far into a ride and you don't you don't really necessarily realize just how much you've ridden you know if you're going all the way to the top of the volcano it could take you you know three hours four hours maybe even five hours um, and you just don't realize it and so it's completely different to ride in you know in the UK or you know, I'm speaking to most people in the UK I, I'd imagine um, you know there's, there's nothing really that compares to it um, so the other thing as well was like nutrition so I took like a lot of stuff out with me uh, because you can never really rely on supermarket stuff um, not in Europe I find um, not as much as you can in the UK like the, the the cereal bar market I feel is bigger in the UK than it is in Europe um, I don't know that's an observation I have when I go to supermarkets it's weird isn't it but I think taking stuff with you is quite important um, and not really like skimping on it because you know if you are going to eat quite a lot when you're on the bike and you're going uphill for that length of time then yeah like don't skimp on it um, gels bars drinks anything that's like really easy to get down then you know that's that's um, that's the priority if you are going this time of year or like you know between I guess November and, and February um, 
you know, you, you probably are going to be sweating, but there's plenty of, there's absolutely loads of petrol stations, you know, uh, gas stations around. Um, so you don't have to feel like you've got a ration, you know, your bottles or your liquid um, or food for that matter. You know, like I picked up a bag of uh, one euro sweets, like literally like it was almost like Haribo like a hundred grand bag of Haribo, but it was one euro in a petrol station. I just had that on the last day after we climbed Masca. Um, so you're not gonna be ever really short or without anything like that. Um, and, you know, I think, uh, I think the, 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 well, the biggest thing is just, just having fun because you can ride your bike all day when you're out here. Um, but it's things like that where you can get carried away, right? Um, and you end up, you know, riding all day, but not really, you know, stopping for lunch or, you know, um, you know, a lot of the pros when they're out training, you know, for a, for a long period of time, like if they ride for six hours or even longer than six hours, they'll stop for lunch, uh, you know, because it's a long, long day, you know, and you're not really having any solid food and proper food and it's difficult, you know, there's not, there's going to be a limited selection you know the cafe we stopped at villa floor which i'm sure many of you know of um they were doing like ham and cheese like toasted sandwiches but i opted for like two carrot cakes or i think it was one carrot cake and a coffee and then we did like another hour and a half riding and then we stopped there again and had another carrot cake and a coffee i probably wouldn't advise that if i'm honest <laughs> I would probably advise having something a bit more substantial um, than a carrot cake. Although, you know, I got round. You know, I got round. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think there's much more I can say, really, other than, um, yeah, like, the, the the hydration side of it. Like, you, you can get plenty of water. You can get, like, um, there's an electrolyte drink that they do at most uh, petrol stations as well. Um, I'm, like, blanking on the name, but it's kind of like Powerade, but just doesn't taste it doesn't taste as sweet it's it's got electrolytes in but it's not um it's definitely not as expensive as like a, a sport branded um drink um but yeah uh so essentially we we ate out lunch every day on our rides so we were leaving the house at like 9 a.m we'd get out we'd ride we'd do a loop stop the cafe and then we would uh we would just like finish the ride get back uh there's a mcdonald's just down the street from where we were <laughs> um not that i went there well actually we didn't go there until the last day and it was shut um but we we didn't really because it was like so late in the day we didn't really eat anything until we went out but you know that i have to say like if you go in there for a holiday and you go in there for you know cycling as well like it's good to mix the two so if you can have lunch out while you're on the bike then i would highly recommend that i mean you know it's it's fairly cheap going to these places like you know in comparison to maybe what what i'm used to what we're used to in the uk um you know if there's a group of you which again i highly re recommend going with a group if you can or even you know trying to hook up with people that are out there already um you know company is so much better in places like this and it's it's great to like share off the bike activities with these people as well so like going out for food you know sharing the bill and like pay like one person pays one night another person pays another night some people shout the coffee coffee stop in the day or lunch stop you know things like that it's um you know it's making it's making a trip of it you know and uh, you can only you know you can be there four days like we were well five days but four rides um you know you can really make the most of it you can see a lot of the island <clears throat> you can do masca you can do the big you know the main road up to villa floor you've um you've got plenty of options uh, and you've got a chance to do a recovery day as well um air quotes uh along the coast to los gigantes for example so um plenty of options but yeah we're coming to the top of the climb now actually so i better start winding this down we've got about four minutes left but I uh, just, um, I hope you've enjoyed this this POV of this climb. Um, it's one of my favorites from the whole trip. Um, it's, you should have a look, have a look at the segment and definitely ride it. Um, it's really quiet 
as you've probably seen. Um, but if you're coming down it, like be careful. I know I know one person who's had a crash on this descent. Um, I don't know whether they were hit by a car or whether like they went wide because it's quite twisty. Um, so just be be aware, obviously, if you're away um, from home. Um, but but yeah, it was a great uh, it was a great effort that I that I actually really surprised myself with because this was so late in the ride and it was after a 25 minute climb at about 340 watts already so essentially i rode with the with the group for about four hours and then i rode off on myself uh, by myself and then i did this climb um before this one and then i had about 45 minutes of sort of downhill flat road to get to the bottom of here and I, I was a little bit, you know, it's difficult to know when, when you haven't done it in a long time. But it's another reason why you should never be afraid to give it a stab, if, even if you don't know what you're capable of doing there and then. Like, I know I'm capable of doing 350 watts for half an hour, roughly now. And that's fresh. Um, but as long as you fuel correctly, and that's, that's the thing. I know this is a holiday and a trip, but always try and keep in the back of your mind that, you know, you really want to enjoy it and get the most out of it. Um, and the best way you can do that is to look after yourself when you're out on the bike. You know, it sounds stupid, but like wearing sun cream, um, keeping hydrated, eating plenty, uh, you know, stopping when you need to. Um, I mean, you know, stopping just to take photos is a good excuse, right? But yeah, it's like it's it's part of a holiday, it's part of a training camp. You know, lots of us don't don't ride our bikes as a as our job, you know, for a living. So it's uh, you know. You, you treat it differently to, to how the pros would when you um, but this this was a yeah a, a great effort to kick off the year uh, a great one to start the uh, chasing pro series we call it that I don't know I won't call it that I just uh, I came up with it I thought I'd put it in the in the thumbnail um, but yeah needless to say you know these these guys were flying up here uh, Sivakov ended up being about two minutes faster than this um, I had a block headwind though, I think my back tire was flat, um, my jersey was flapping, uh, <laughs> I don't know, there's no more excuses, um, no, no, but, uh, but curious to come back, I really want to come back to Tenerife and do some of the climbs uh, like this one again, but maybe, you know, with peak form and, and different preparation, I'm just always curious, like it's one of the, I, I never I never got to race properly against these guys, especially on my what I'd call my own terrain. I love climbing, of course. So, uh, so yeah, you know, this is this is a good way for me to to test myself, I suppose. So, anyway, I thank you so much for watching. There is the top at the roundabout. Well, it's the top unless you turn left and you go all the way to the top of TD. But that's a long way to the top from there still. Um, but that's it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha.